Good morning, everybody. Once again, uh, we are here in the framework of the conversation that the Secretary General around started uh, globally on the uh, anniversary of United Nations, 75 years of history, but we want to make sure that uh, our institution gets better and better. And because of that, there is a, a very important uh, effort uh, that the UN are making to listen to the voice of everybody, to try to see how the multilateralism can uh, improve and can better serve humanity, which is what uh, has, it has been built for. Um, within this conversation, which started, we started yesterday, I had the immense pleasure to have with us today uh, Dr. Workne Gebriehu, I hope I pronounce it well, uh, which is the executive secretary of uh, IGAD, uh, another multilateral organization, very important uh, in the Horn of Africa, absolutely crucial to make sure that uh, hand in hand uh, we can create a better humanity. The subject once again is, are there small states in uh, uh, the UN or in the multilateral organizations? Mm. And uh, you know, you're, I have my own opinion, but uh, Excellency, the word is to you. We want to listen to your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Barbara Menzi, UN uh, Residence Coordinator in Djibouti. Very happy to talk on this very important as well as controversial uh, subject. Uh, in the last 48 hours, uh, we, had front, we had front row seats to a closely contested election between two of our IGAD member states. For non-permanent membership status of the United Nations Security Council. Watched closely at the first round of voting failed to deliver a candidate with the required two-third majority. This, out this outcome compelled a second round of voting. In the end, there, was, there were no losers. Kenya won the election and Djibouti's international profile was raised significantly. This kind of competition is very healthy. It is incontrovertible evidence that the multilateralism is alive and well in 2020 and after. The significant level of effort put in by both candidates to gather votes at the regional, continental and global level shows that faith in multilateralism in institutions such as the United Nations is still very strong in the world today. If this seat was not important, it would not have generated the level of interest that it did. Power in the United Nations Security Council is often seen to be concentrated in the hand of five permanent members, P5. However, more often than not, this refers to hard to foresee power as embedded by the demographic, military, and economic might of the five big countries, the Security Council. Nonetheless, there is also soft power as exercised through the capacity to attract and co-opt and persuade through other avenues such as culture, shared interests, norms, and values. As we speak here today, the international system is replayed with the example of small countries that punch above their weight on the basis of soft power alone. Djibouti and Kenya equally gave us a demonstration of this over the past two days or more than that. The measurable disparities between big and small countries in the United Nations and in the multilateralism are obvious for all to see. For example, half of world military spending, that is around 51.6%, is from only two countries. 
Similarly, in terms of economy, more than half of the world's wealth, that is 53.6% is held by only five countries. Finally, in terms of population, more than half of the world's population, that is 52% and is concentrated in only seven countries. In other words, around half of the world's voice is held by 4% of the United Nations membership countries. And yet, in spite of these significant disparities, our international system grants equal status and access to global dialogue forums for small island nations all over the world, Pacific, Caribbean, Africa, or other places, as it does, as it does to the countries with large armies, economies, and population. On this international stage, small countries can be seen and heard here with equal clarity as big ones. Where small countries cannot project power, they are still able to exercise influence. The recent election I mentioned earlier illustrates the, this point. Each of the, the 192 votes cast carried equal weight. None was bigger than the other. And there was no power of veto to turn a vote into a zero. In my view, therefore, the fundamental question that was that we are truly trying to address here by here today is how much influence do smaller countries have in the UN? In order to answer this question, we should look at the concept of influence as consisting of two elements. One is voice and the second is hearing. Small countries are more often than not at the biggest frontiers of growth and innovation. For instance, the IMF reported that three EGAN member states, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Djibouti, were in the top 10 fastest growing economies in the world, registering about 7% growth rate before the coronavirus hit. This makes small countries attractive destinations for global investment and gives them an elevated voice when negotiating in the international system. Small countries also have the advantage of numbers which, if taken together, add up to block that cannot be ignored. And that is one of the advantage of multilateralism. Small countries coming together to have a loud enough voice to be heard by the big ones, and also to tangibly shape the international agenda. In my country, there is a saying, as long as the ants work together, they can carry an elephant. In recent years, multilateral institutions, particularly within the United Nations system, such as UNIDO, the United Nations Human Rights Council, UNESCO, and most recently, the WHO have witnessed the, the withdrawal of some member states. The EU has also recently seen one of its members live, and yet these organizations continue to exist and remain relevant to millions, billions of the world population. We are working on the return of Eritrea and a resolution of the question of Somaliland. This is a vote of confidence in the importance of multilateralism in our region. Multilateral institutions may be facing some challenges, but multilateralism very much alive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellency, for your inspiring words. Indeed, every voice counts, and together the voice grows louder. And uh, we're looking forward to continue the collaboration with IGAT, our sisters and brothers uh, at IGAT, 
and uh, together we can uh, make sure that everybody's voice is counted for and is heard. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and have a great weekend, uh, Barbara. Thank you. I say to you.